Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today you join me sat at the computer and I need to buy some stock. So I'm having a look at Aston Barclay and BCA because it's a Wednesday. So on a Wednesday, Westbury, they'll have a sale at Aston Barclay and obviously BCA, they run sales every day. I don't have that much stuff to try and buy, um, but I do have some stuff in my BCA watch list and I have some stuff in my Aston Barclay. Um, in fact, the only things I'm looking at Aston Barclay is Range Rovers or Land Rovers. So probably a bit foolhardy. Um, we've got uh, an Evoke. Now again, it looks just good value. Cap clean price of 7.7. Seven. Uh, this, let's have a look at valuation. I think it's about 12 grand, just over 12. So I reckon you'd probably try and price it at 11.995, um, which would give us a very decent margin if you get it for around about that. What have I got written down here? What's the registration? I reckon about eight and a half grand all in. Um, so eight two maybe. 8-1, realistically. Might make it a worthwhile buy. Well, it would make it a worthwhile buy. You have about four grand or more profit in it, which you'd need. Right, that's the warning bell telling us it's going through. That's my last one. No, it's going for more. That. Oh, I could have gone a bit more, obviously. I couldn't have been greedy wanting a four grand margin, but let's just have a quick look at the damage report on that because I did look and it does need a bit of fixing up. You know, it's not perfect. We got a dent there. What else? Uh, well, a couple of dents, I guess, somewhere here. This is offside rear panel. This was the thing that bothered me more. It's obviously had a paint repair at some point and not done that well. It looks a bit rough and horrible. Um, lots of chips on the bumper. All right, wheels and things. These are all minor things that aren't gonna matter too much on this type of thing. Um, so that wouldn't put me off too much, but it's not mint mint. Um, it also told us that, where was I looking? Offside front tire, less than 1.6 mils, so legal. The inside front tire, less than 1.6 mils, so legal. So it needs a pair of tires. It's pretty grubby inside. It's going to need a real good valet, and there's only a limit to how well that will come up. So, yeah, it's uh, not the end of the world. The last one I'm interested in, and again, this could be an interesting one. 2012 Discovery 4. So I think that is the sort of facelift era that's got the twisty dial thing. Let's have a look, see if we can find. Yes, yeah, so we've got the twisty dial selector, whatever. So it's the newer version rather than the, the introduction kind of years. Still had the pig's foot type gear selector. Uh, it's only done 89,500 miles. So nice mileage. It's in a nice green color. It's come from Mercedes Benz Southwest. So it's been traded in somewhere at a decent dealership. There could be a potential great margin in this because it's about 13 grand retail. Cap clean price is eight. You don't have to be a genius mathematician to realize that's about five grand margin in that. Um, let's just have a quick look at our damage report, see if there's anything we've missed. Let's have a look at the inspection report. Oh, it's not really, I haven't really done a detailed one. And we'll look at the AA Assured report. Nothing much on here other than it says central locking excluding fob and remote access. It's got requires attention, so could be a flat battery, maybe it'll want, you know, something programming, I don't know, but if you've got five grand to work with, it's not gonna be the end of the world, is it? The only thing that might make this a bit risky, but also potentially a really great profit, is that the MOT has expired. 
Now, where did I look up the MOT? Let's have a quick look at the MOT. And we may as well do this with vehicle score. So if I put our reg in there, which is Whiskey Golf 12 Uniform Yankee Whiskey, it will give us a score as well, which would be handy to know. 728 at 999. It says that's good, which is good for a you know 12-year-old car, isn't it? Um, is it ULES compliant? I doubt it. It's not. No, not no shocker there. So three litre diesel. Um, bad bits. I mean, it would have a better score, but it's got no current MOT. Uh, it's also saying the MOT is due the next three months, but it would be because it's out. Uh, vehicles over 10 years old and mileage above 80,000. So most of those things sort an MOT out. Most of your bad points are sorted out, to be honest. Let's have a look. Um, mileage tracker looks good. Didn't really... Oh, that was probably a retest in 2019. So the last one expired February. So what are we in now? April. So a couple of months ago. Um, but it when it did that a year before it passed with no advisories prior to that it had central prop shaft bearing a slight play and offside lower suspension arm pin or bush worn but not resulting in excessive movement we assume they'd have got that done if it's passed again um why it's sitting around with no MT, it could just be that you know it was waiting around for a deal to be done maybe they were waiting on a car to be delivered from mercedes and it was taking a long time they didn't bother to redo the mt people just forget or do they know something sinister about it that we don't? This is the risk we are gonna have to take, but I am gonna have a punt on it. Eight grand would give us a five grand margin, but can we get it cheaper? Will others be put off? Will we be ballsier than them? I doubt it, I doubt it, but we'll see what happens. Right, we've got about 10 or 15 lots away until that Disco 4 goes through, so I'm going to look at what we've got at BCA because a lot of these are going through later on this afternoon and I'm probably just going to leave proxy bids on them. So, I do really like this, Bridgewater, it's just up the road. Look at this bright orange Disco Sport. Some people are going to love it, some are going to hate it, but I think that's freaking cool. Oh, it's a seven-seater one as well. don't think all of them are. So yeah, nice cream leather auto uh, pan roof. See if we've got any pictures of any damage on that. Looks all right. Let's see what it says. So we've got six service history stamps or records. Uh, what's the mileage? 94 and a half thousand miles. Uh, that's a grade two. It's saying retail is 11,250. I'm going to check that out myself. So we'll go to our trader. Portal WG15 FYR Fire Fire Orange 94417. Let's see what it's telling us. It's saying 12,767 pounds. Let's do a little quick retail check. Tell us how popular in our area that is. 85 out of 100. So that's really, really good. I'm going to say we want to put it at about 12,495 to start off with. What do we say our cap clean was? Cap clean is about 9,000 pounds. So if I wanted a £4,000 margin, I'd have to get it for eight and a half. You can have a £3,000 margin out of it. Um, it is really close to us. What does it say about MOT? So it's got five months MOT on it. we do a quick vehicle score on this as well. Let's get our score. 848, the average score is 666, the mark of the beast. Uh, is it you less compliant? It's not. Not a shocker. It is it's also worth noting, it's a 2.2. .2. It's not the 2 d Ingenium, which most of these disco sports are. Um, it hasn't got many bad bits to say about it. Mileage track is good. Uh, let's scroll down MOT. So what have we? Uh, tires, brake pads, tire, tire. Nothing other than tires and brake pads and discs advise has never even failed an MOT. Uh, I'm willing to go quite strong with this one, to be fair. So what do we say? I reckon we could, I say quite strong. What we're gonna do is leave a proxy bid. This doesn't go through until quarter past three. So I might get a chance to get here and bid and see what happens, but I might not. So I'll leave this proxy bid as like a just leave a bid on record, they will bid up for me. I am going to bid £9,200. 
Then with fees on top, it's going to be about 9,600, just to leave us about a three grand margin. Um, so I'm going to confirm to that. That is that one done. Let's see what else we're tracking today. So these aren't in order. They are on my phone, which is annoying, but I suppose these are all the ones for today. Got this little Fiesta 1.6 ST thing. Do you know what? I'm, I've changed my mind. I don't, don't want anything to do with that. Don't know why I put that in there. I'll, I'll put things in my watch list overnight because I'll sit there on the sofa or in bed, spend half an hour scrolling through and looking for cars for the next day. Sometimes I'm like, that's interesting. I like things that are a bit interesting. They might have a good margin and people are gonna wanna search out online, you know, not your run of the mill, like a Hyundai i10 or whatever, that people might go to a car supermarket and wanna buy them. Um, more people are searching for like an ST or a nice Land Rover or something. So that's what I will try and aim for. This Range Rover Evoke's actually the next one to go through. It's about 130 lots away. Oh, right, okay, hang on. We're gonna have to switch back because the next car through is our Disco 4 at Aston Barkley. Right, here we go. So I'm on a bit about eight. Well, win okay, this for about eight. Start slow, but still going. So we go at six one. If we get it for this, that is a risk well worth taking. <sighs> Back in at six three. Oh. Oh. Six down, six down, six down, so it's sold for 76, that would be about 8-1. Obviously there would have been a huge margin in it, but there's a just massive risk with the MOT that someone might have, you know, run a mile from that because they knew it needed X, Y or Z. Don't know, I'm not there to check it over in person, so... This is where you see like, how much of my time is spent trying to buy cars, a lot of the time unsuccessfully. So it always makes me laugh when people say, oh, you should have checked the MOT history, you should have checked this, you should have checked that. It's a little bit of representation of, this is actually a quiet day really, of how many cars I'm trying to buy. We can't do the MOT history on all of them. You usually don't have time. So anyway, let's go back to our Land Rover Evoque. Again, it's 2.2, it's a nice red color. We've just sold Disco Sport in that color. 49,000 miles, so really nice. Grade two, only two owners. Uh, it's only got two service history records. It's a manual as well. Um, what's it saying about MOT? Okay, so like I said, I might have already said this, I can't remember now. Uh, five months of MOT left on it. It's saying retail is 10,000 pounds, but I bet you Auto Trader says different. So what's our registration? AP64. DPX, mileage is 49,478, pounds, it is saying. It's got a retail rating of 21 out of 100, so not huge, but I still think it will perform well. I would say, what's everyone else is doing this? So everyone else is below 100% of price position. These are all the things I will look at. These are other cars that are for sale, and you can get a good idea. Like that one's at 96.2% of its retail valuation and he's had it in stock for 283 days the next one's at 96.8 and he's had it in for 34 days i don't think we'd have asked for too long in fact it tells us here how long it should take us to sell but let's just say we wanted to go in hard and fast aggressive 11995 make it under that mark um what does it say cap cleans seven six let's say you got this for eight we have a huge margin in it, so I think, what if we got it for eight, 
six. Is it fairly local? Where does it tell me? Bridgewater. So Bridgewater, that is really handy. I'm going to go more. I'm going to go... I've got it for 8.8. Eight. We've still got over £3,000 in it. So I'm going to say a proxy bid of 8.5, which is like 900 quid over cap clean. But, you know, there's still a lot of money in it. So let's place that one. That one's, like I say, going through in 130, so I should be able to let you know how that goes. Um, what else have we got? Volvo XC60 is the next one up after that, which is this one. It's grade four. The automatic gearboxes on these worry me a little bit because it's four power shift gearboxes, basically. I'm sure someone will tell me I'm wrong in the comments, but anyway, that's, that's where my mind's going with it. Oh, interesting to see two bottles of oil in the boot, ready to top it up. What does that tell us? Are they just a very conscientious car owner? And they check that oil regularly, or is there something up there? Mm. So yeah, that's why they're showing us as a grade four. It's a bit tatty. Where is this one? It's Blackbush. Do you know what? I'm just gonna. It's not interested. It's tatty. It's two hours away. There's always more cars to buy tomorrow. So then after that. God, why am I looking at a Vauxhall Insignia Tora? I mean, it would sell really easy, but... Mm, it would sell easy, but is there much of a margin in it? I doubt it. The lower down the market we're getting now, the more competition there is. There's more people selling at that kind of market, as you'd expect. So the margins are slimmer because people are also willing to work for slimmer margins. I'm getting to a point now on this stage where I'm just... I'd much rather... I still want to buy interesting cars, and I still want to buy cars that sell quickly, but I want a decent margin in them because, you know, it costs to be in business. So what's that leave us with? Got an A-Class. What's going on with the A-Class? Uh, Ship Bristol, grade three. What's the report saying? One of the tyres wants changing. Being black would be quite a popular thing, I would have thought. Is it going to be a manual? It is a manual, which... It's a shame as far as I'm concerned, but for a lot of people would not be a problem. In fact, they'd prefer it. Let's say 73,000 miles, I think. What was that? A bit of damage there. Oh, oh just a bit smeggy on the buttons there, but... Um, what it is, you get these scratches in the things. Oh, that's the seatbelt buckle, wasn't it? What car was it? I saw that on the other day. Oh. The Corsa VXR that we are raffling off. Not that one, you know, it's not the end of the world, is it? But there was a few scratches in the door then. I was trying to think, what is that? And it's where the seatbelt's been caught in the door when you shut it and scratch it. And I guess that's a fairly common thing. Broken door thingy. We'll Google how much one of those is in a bit. Well, I've done it a lot on the back door. I'll do a few touch ups. Hang on a minute. We've got treasure in this one. Uh, this back bumper looks a bit crappy. Right, let's run the numbers. That's the most important thing. It's saying a cap clean of five and a half. Uh, why is it saying incorrect mileage? Right, before we price it, let's do a vehicle score and see if that says anything different about that mileage. So YS14XTK. Scores well, 815. It's not US compliant. I thought it might have been. You know, it's a 1.5 diesel, but still, they're quite efficient. Um, mileage tracker looks fine. So, I wonder why they're saying incorrect mileage. What was... 70... So the last MOT was in 2023, 72, 394. What does it say in the notes? DVSA discrepancy, mileage incorrect, VOSA discrepancy. Oh, I don't think so. I think that, again, is where someone's inputted it in the what's it, because I can't see anything there. Tell you what, we'll go to the MOT history. 26, 37, 42, 47, 55, 63, 72. What's wrong there, then? 100% pass rate, top marks. Right, I'm not worried about that. So, what did we say our reg was? YS14 X. TK mileage 
which I don't think is incorrect. But hopefully we'll put other people off. 75, 330. Retail is just under 8,000 pounds. 80 out of 100. Yeah, you probably want to be paying around about that cap clean. If you want a 2,000 pound margin, you'd be wanting to pay 5,909 all in. It's not as risky or as expensive as other cars, but it is a little bit tatty in a few places, isn't it? And um, only got one service. We might be able to get more from Mercedes, but you know, once a tyre, get a call from Sam Edge of G3. Hi, Sam. Hi, Jim. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. Yourself? I'm not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Good, good, good. Um, right. Yes, that was Sam of G3. So even just today, just trying to buy stuff, I'm already thinking tomorrow's sale, sales in the future. It's a full-time job trying to buy stock. Um, so what do we say? Well, we're trying to figure out a bid for this A180. I don't want to go crazy on it, actually. Um, I might put a bid of 5-1 in. And if we win it, it'll be 5-5, five, five, which we probably won't. It would give us... I'll go 5-2. So that'd be 5-6-ish. Which would give us 250 quid to kind of prep it, and then it would give us a £2,000 gross margin. Place that. It's just those three left now. So we tried bidding on the three Land Rovers. Aston Barkley. That's all done and dusted now, isn't it? There's nothing else there I'm watching, I don't think. I guess we'll see what happens. I need to get on and do some other stuff now, including carsboughtformore.com, etc. I'll check back in with you and we find out whether we won them or not. It'll either be I won them and I can tell you what I won them for, or if not, they'll probably have just gone and I won't know how much they sold for, unfortunately, because unless I watch it live, I won't find out because I don't have a habit of telling you how much they sold to other people for. If I can uh, get some footage of them, I will. If not, catch up with you later. Right, so... I managed to catch the Evoke in time, so we're about to watch that go through. So I've removed my proxy bid, which was eight and a half grand, and I'm going to bid it up myself. So I always prefer to do it that way if I can, because the auctioneer might say, oh, something that I hadn't picked up on or whatever. Um, yeah, I just prefer actively doing it myself rather than just finding out. And then we'll also know how much it does go for if we don't win it. So here we go. To grade two with a clean essential as well on this one, and grade two with pan roof as well on this one. Again, sensible figure for you on this one. Caps at seventy-six hundred pound, guys. Uh, bid at the moment is only at six thousand pounds. Six four on sale. Six five for the hammers up the go at nine. It's going seven, fast. Nine. Seven, seven four three. seven. Seventy five up the go at nine. Flying. Appreciate the quick bidding, guys. Bids coming through at eight three. Whoa, eight, four, flying. Five six up the go. The hammers up the go at seven. Nine grand. Nine one, nine two, nine three. Nine thousand three hundred. They're looking at nine thousand seven hundred. I guess we said it was about twelve grand, didn't we? Or what do we say? Can't remember. Yeah, that went for a lot more than I expected. Um I wonder how that will fare us with our Discovery Sport. I quite want that. Normally I don't get too fast, but I do. I don't know why. It's because it's orange. Stupid. Anyway, catch up with you when that happens later. Right then, quick update for you. It's actually 22.6 now, so everyone else has gone home. Um, but we did win one of our proxy bids. So, what did we win? We won the Mercedes-Benz A180 which is at Bristol, so hopefully we can pick that up relatively quickly. Maybe we'll follow up in this video, maybe we won't. I don't know what this video is even going to be. I think this video is going to be, look how hard it is for me to buy cars for me. Um, yeah, I'm relatively happy with that. I can't remember anything bad about that. I think what I said was, what, uh, I can't remember what my proxy bid was, but I don't think I wanted to spend more than about five grand on it, because I think it maybe it wanted a bit of, it wants a tyre. And maybe it wanted some kind of touching up and whatever. Uh, and it had a retail of about eight, didn't it? Well, we actually won it for 4,300 quid. Plus the fees makes that, uh, let me find out for you, 
£4,672.96. That's £4,300 at our bid, 360 pounds of auction fees plus £12.96 for an essential check, which is not worth £12.96. I'll be completely honest, because it gives you no comeback guarantee or anything. But I'm fairly confident. Oh, is this the one where we said that we that it said incorrect mileage? That's right. I struggle to remember everything. I mean, for you guys, this would have been two minutes ago. For me, this was a few hours ago. Um, yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. Hopefully that's why we got it cheap. Um, because everyone else thought it's incorrect mileage, not because they know something that I don't, but we'll find out. Other than that, we've still got, uh, one going through, which is the orange Land Rover Discovery Sport. So that's 66 lots away. I'm actually going to hop in a car now and finish another video. So I might be back here in order to catch it in time, maybe, but... If we're still like 40 lots away, I'm, I'm going home. Sorry, I can't be bothered to stay here. Um, but I might be able to catch it on my phone at home later, or I'll just give you an update tomorrow. So next time you see me, we'll be discussing a Discovery Sport. I'll see you then. Right, well, I'm back. Uh, it's now 10 past six. Sophie's gonna go mental at me. But I did promise her I'd get some donuts on the way home. So, you know, these are the sacrifices we have to make. Uh, and the Discovery Sport is but 15 lots away, so um, it, it would probably go through while I'm in the car. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat myself to a hazelnut hot chocolate. Just to, you know, wind down the day. Right, easy as that, in my favourite vehicle score mug. Frankly, the last thing I need is liquid calories. Uh, but, hey-ho, it is what it is. We're now nine lots away, so I'll join you when it's going through. Right, here we go. Eight, five. I was willing to bid nine, two for this. So we're at nine, I'm in at nine. Someone else is in at nine, one. I'm in at nine, two. 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 10,000, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, this is obviously not going to be as long as it's actually taken me in real life, but this might give you an insight into just how much work and time goes into trying to buy cars every day that uh, is not successful. You'd think that it would just be a case of find the cars you want, uh, leave bids on them, and you win them, and that's it. But it's not. You've, it's, you know, kissing a lot of frogs to find your prince or princess or sifting through a haystack for a needle. I, I don't know. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Some other kind of metaphor. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of time and effort goes into it. And yeah, it's, um, I couldn't do this on my own because it takes a lot of time just doing this. But there you are. That is a day uh, in the life of trying to buy stock for Barrow Motors. Maybe that should be the, the title. A day, of, a day in the life of trying to buy stock. Um, uh, yeah, a uh, used car dealership. I don't know, but um, you will have found it already in the title of this video. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe because, of course, I'm still giving away a £2,000 tag for your watch, which, if you're one of my subscribers, by the time we hit 75,000, you'll be automatically entered to potentially win that. If you want to make my life easier when it comes to sourcing stock, then you can sell me your car. Just head to my website, carsboughtformore.com, enter all your information, and we'll come back to you with a tailored quote and try and make it a hassle-free transaction for you. We can even pick up the car. And don't forget, I'm still running raffles on my new website, feelgoodcompetitions.com. We are raising money for Jack Guide to get him some treatment that he's definitely going to need in America. You can win a Corsa VXR, a thousand pounds cash, or a very nice Casio G-Shock watch that's been modified to look like something much nicer. Uh, 
So make sure you check out feelgoodcompetitions.com. Uh, that's it, I think. Thank you so much again for watching. I will see you next time.